Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan again, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm gonna be showing you a demo that I created for face tracking. This demo is going to be a prototype of capturing face expressions. The UI is going to be futuristic. I want to be able to control the rotation of the UI. So we're basically gonna have an overlay in front of our face, which is the video that you're seeing behind the scenes. I'm pretty excited because I'm gonna walk you through some of the code that I implemented to accomplish this. We're going to be looking at what's called an expression manager and also a face UI manager. And then by the end of this video, you should have enough information to implement it on your own. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what I have today, which is the demo of the expressions that I built. So I'm gonna show you all these videos. We're gonna play them all at once. And every time the text turns red, you're going to see that an expression gets detected. As you can see on this one, I'm detecting as narrow. On this one, I'm detecting a smile. And then the last one is just detecting a sad face. And some of them are very simple. I just have two different what's called blend shapes. And those blend shapes allow me to determine, you know, what expression is detected. In this case, I have two. I am detecting the mouth from left and also the mouth from right. And then on this one, I'm using the smile left and a smile right. And the snarl is a little bit more complicated, so I have couple of more plane shapes detected. So I want to jump into Unity and show you the entire project. I I want to start with some of the some of the main components that make up the, the face expression. And for those of you who don't know, I'm using ARKit to get face expressions, which I actually get from I have my own implementation, but I build it with using blend shapes that ARKit provides. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to walk you through some of the script. I also have a UI piece that I'm going to be showing you. But the first, let's go ahead and jump into that code since a lot of you may be interested in that area. So the way that it works is I have this thing called the expression manager. So if we open it up and then I can show you some of the configuration. And don't get intimidated by this. It's actually fairly simple. Uh, for the most part, the air kit is the one that is doing most of the work. And then I'm just, you know, getting some of that data and then combining and creating logical checks that allow me to detect when expression it's detected. So I have this expression manager that it's the one that is controlling whether expression it's detected or not. So I think of this as, you know, the one that is grabbing all the different pieces and then based on the pieces, which in my case was the blend shapes, I, I know when an expression needs to be, you know, detected and then I apply an action. So I have this expression configuration. Let's go ahead and take a look at that before I keep looking at the manager. So if we look at the man at the configuration, you're going to see that every expression has what's called an expression name. And this is just a name for me to, you know, to determine what the expression is. And I, and I can tell you in the code when you know when something is detected it's going to be in, in my case to say that i'm doing the snarl so this one is going to be called the snarl i also have what's called a blend shape range and this is my own object as well and i have an action executor because in many cases we may have you know we may have multiple blend shapes that are making an expression and based on the expression i want to execute an action so that's what i'm using this for i can also have if i go into the blend shape range I can also have an action executor on the on the blend shape itself. And so let's say that I, I do a mouth a smile right, which is going to be one of the blend shape locations. Then in that case, I might want to maybe turn the light on or I might want to, you know, change the background of a game because I'm smiling. You know, you can do a lot of things with this type of implementation. So the blend shape location enum is also my, my own implementation, but it matches ARKit implementation, it just has all the different blend shapes that they have available. And of course, with a lot of these values, we can do and make and build a lot of different expressions. So that's what that piece is. Let me go back into, into that object or to implementation. So let me go back into blend shape range. So this one is just determining, you know, what the blend shape that I'm going to be tracking for that expression is going to be. So let's say that I want to detect when the jaw is open. Let's say that this blend shape was jaw open then I could look at two different values. I can look at a range. So the lower bound, it's going to be my minimum value. The upper bound is going to be, you know, my maximum value. And based on these ranges, I know if expression, well, if a blend shape is within the range that I want to, you know, that I want for the expression. So if we go back to the video, I, I want to show you so that it makes, it makes sense to you. 
So let's say that we're looking, we're looking at this video, right? And if we look at the mouth frown left, the minimum value that I have set in here is 0.3 and the maximum value is one. Right now the value is about 4.12 and it's, you know, it's pretty high. It's really not within the boundaries. In this case, I am detecting the sat face. So you can see there's a little curvature on the mouth. So the minimum value, it was from 0.3 and one. But the value that I'm getting right now is point, and, and this is not a negative number, this is just a separator between this and this. So in this case, I'm getting a value that is 0.6. So that is within the range. And then this other value, which is the right, is also within the range. So I know that I'm detecting a smile. So that's how this object works. This detection count, it just allows me to, to think about how many times I'm detecting that. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want to do, you know, long term, I may want to change, you know, how frequently we're looking for expressions. And I'm going to show you that in the code as well. So that's what the blend shape range is. Let's go back into the configuration. So I talked to you about expression name. I also talked to you about the blend shape range and also the action executor. And this is a scriptable object that I use to assign to expression manager. So that's what you can see here that I how I create asset menu, expression, and then this is how I create expression. So let's go back into the expression manager. So that's what the expression configuration is. I can have multiple expressions in one, basically it's an array, so I can have a snarl, I can also have a smile. This doesn't work with multiple expressions yet because I have to make some changes, but I'm, for now I just have one scene for each expression. So if you go and look at the Unity project, you're gonna see that in scenes I have, you know, a sad scene, I also have a smile scene, and I also have a snarl scene. And the reason for that is because I'm all, I'm not really ready to, to handle multiple expressions at once, but I will in the next few, few videos. Then this is the formatting that you see on the screen when I'm, you know, when I'm detecting, if I go back into, let's go ahead and jump into one of the videos. So this is gonna be these formatting. I have the, the actual expression name here, the detection count, the blend shape, the minimum, and the maximum, which I call the lower bound, and the, basically the, I think I call it the high bound. Let me go back into that, I remember now, and go into the blend shape range. Oh yeah, so it's gonna be the low bound and the upper bound, so that's what these two values are. And then the last value is the value that I'm getting from ARKit telling me what the, what the blend shape value is. So that's what this is, the detection rate, this is just how frequently I want to try to do a detection, and the reason for that is because I don't want to do it every, you know, on every frame. So what I do is I just have a value here that says, okay, for every second I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask ARKit what the value of that blade shape is. This one is for highlighting the color on detection. So if we go back into the video again, and you notice that as soon as I as soon as I detect one of the blend shapes, this one is a little bit hard to see, but it matches the color of my UI. So where if I go back and see here, it's white and then it changes to blue. So that's why this one, I have it set to red. It's not this text, it's actually the plain shape text. I just overwrote it to be blue. And in fact, if we go back into Unity and we look at the uh, look at that prefab, you're gonna see that the color that I have for detection is going to be the same blue color that you see on the UI. So let's go back into the code. And so that's what that is. This is something that I'm working on. I want to change the material on the face depending on you know whether I want to activate the detection or not. So what I want to do is for the next video is if I go, let's go back into the video. If I'm going to be adding a button here and I say detection on, detection off, and if it's on, I'm going to have that material that it looks like I'm scanning the face. And then if it's off, I'm not going to have that material. So that's what that implementation is going to be. I'll show you that in a future video. This allows me to track what the current blend shapes are. I can pass in, uh, you know, the name of the blend shape and also the value, which the ARKit framework and Unity calls it a coefficient. So I'm just calling it right now. In this case, it's going to be just a float, and I just call it low bound and high bound because I'm doing a range. But just make sure that you know that that's the coefficient. Then the, I'm also storing the blend shape UIs. I'm storing the name of the blend shape here and also a text box for each one of them, which in my case, I'm building them on demand. So if I'm setting a configuration, I'm building two text boxes. So this is one, this one is two. But if I look at the one that I did for, for the snarl, that one has a lot more and I'm not doing that manually. I'm doing that in code and that's why you see four here. 
and then you can see only two here and then the other one only has two as well the one that I'm using for the smile so let's go ahead and go back into the code the face of system I'm using that because I need to tell the system when the face is changing so and I'm also using that to detect you know what the value of the coefficient is I'm also need to track the air phase because I need to know when the phase is changing as well. I also know want to know if the blend shapes have been enabled or not. So you just have a Boolean value for that. And then this is going to be a timer that I use in, in conjunction with the detection rate. So I'm going to I'm going to quickly walk you through all of this so you don't you don't get bored to that. But right, the first thing that I do is I just set up the initial blend shape values. The, if we look at the blend shape values, all it is is just a dictionary. So I set everything to zero based on the expression configuration. So remember, this one is an array, so I'm looping through each expression and getting the ranges. And based on those ranges and, and names, I'm basically storing them in a dictionary. So that's just a starting point so that I know, you know what, the, what the actual UIs are going to be that I need to create. I also create the bug overlays and also you know some cleanup that I, that I need to do. I also get the face manager, you know, that is in the scene. So I just call find object of type AR manager. I don't have multiple, so I, I can just do that. And then as long as that's not null, I get the face up system for AR kit. The next thing that I do is I get the face component, the AR face component, which I know is attached to this object, which is why I'm just doing, uh, you know, I get component. I'm also attaching the unupdated to the face updated method. And you can see if I go, if I go to my method here, and it's not this update, this is the game update. It's going to be the unupdate method here. And what I do, I just call, I just have a lambda that calls into the update phase features. And this is the one that is doing most of the work. I'm just saying, okay, as soon as this gets called, I know that I'm going to initialize, you know, tell the system that I started capturing blend shapes. Then I say, okay, AR kit phase up system, can you tell me the value of the phase of the blend shape coefficients? I pass in a face with a trackable ID because we can handle multiple faces. So let's say that you had, you know, your friend next to you and you wanted to track these for both of you. It could work. It would work with both of you. For now, it only works for one face. The reason for that is because I haven't implemented more of a dynamic UI that is going to be attached. And when I say dynamic UI, I'm not talking about this piece right here. I'm talking about the whole thing. So for now, this is just going to work with one face. I'm going to be Again, changing that in the future to handle multiple faces. So as soon as I get the value of the blend shades based on the trackable ID, the face track ID that I have detected, I go through all the different blend shapes that got detected. Then I convert the blend shape location to a string because I need the name for my dictionary. Then I say, okay, current blend shapes, the dictionary that I built initially that I show you on the setup, I try to get that value. I get the coefficient back and then I just store that value in my dictionary so that I can keep track of those values as soon as the update phase features give, give us give us those, those values. I can't even speak today. I think I'm speaking too fast. But that's how that part works. And that's actually how most of these work. The, the next piece that is important here and the reason why I'm doing blend shapes enable is because I want to make sure that I'm not I don't keep running into the tech expressions. As if I'm not, if is if the blend shape system hasn't been enabled, if it has been enabled, I'm just using a timer to determine, you know, when to try to detect the expressions. And this timer is just a, you know, fairly simple timer. I just say as long as I haven't reached the detection rate, I'm going to increment it. I grab delta time, multiply it by one. As soon as I hit the the max, then I just call my detection. So every second in, in this case is going to be calling this, and then I just reset it as soon as I call the, the detect expression. So let's go ahead and take a look at that method because that's the one that is doing most of the work. So this one just goes through every single one of the expression configurations. I also go and ask, you know, the configuration blend shape, give me the range because this one is going to give me the low bound and up and up bound like I showed you before. I get the name of the blend shape. I get the key. I, I would try to make sure that that blend shape is in my dictionary. Because if, if the system is detecting a blend shape that I don't want to track, there's really no reason for me to try to look and see if that, you know, if that blend shape is in the expression. So as long as it is in the expression that I want to detect, I build a, a dynamic UI. So these are the text boxes that I show you. I get the blend shape name out of my UI. 
actually I get my UI component by passing in the the key of that blend shape of that blend shape name. Then this is gonna give me the UI that gets stored. Then I can also get the value by doing the same thing with the current blend shape dictionary. So it's gonna give, give me the coefficient. And then what I do is I say, okay, you know what? I'm going to be detecting whether I am between the boundaries. So I get the new lower, I get the new upper by just asking the system a question. The reason why I do this is I don't want to, I want to make sure that we're not looking for values that are negative, that are negative. So I'm saying, okay, if the low bound is less than zero, I'm gonna set it to zero. Otherwise, I'm gonna set it to a low bound. The on the upper side, I'm just saying, okay, if the range upper bound is less than or equal to the to the low bound, then I'm going to get the low bound. Otherwise, I'm gonna get. This is just to make sure that I get the. This is a clean, you know, a clean, a clean range. The next thing that I do is I just, you know, format the the text that I'm gonna be showing on the text boxes by using my formatting that I set up above. I get the configuration name, the detection count. So this is going to be, you know, setting up this text that you see right here. So then the next thing that I ask the system, okay, if the current blend shape value between the, the new lower value and the new upper value, if we are within that, then I know that the color got detected. Basically that blend shape is in our expression. I increment the detection count. And then if I have, for, for instance, if I have an action that I want to execute, then I can just call the action in the in the case in the example that I talked to you about, maybe turning the light on or or dimming the opacity or changing the background color. You can do something like that, and then where we change the UI based on the the current blend shake values. But if we don't detect that, I'm gonna leave the you know the value of the text box color to be to be white. If every single one of my blend shapes within the boundaries, then I know that the detection gets set. The reason why I know that is because I'm gonna be calling that that method right here, and this method is the one that gives me, you know, that tells me whether all the different all the different blend shapes are in my expression, and if that is true, so what I'm doing here, I'm just saying, okay, I'm gonna pass in the configuration, and I'm gonna ask the system, okay, in all my current blend shape UIs, are all the values set to the color that I have designated? If they are, and if they match all the keys that I have in my dictionary, then I know that I detected, you know, an expression. The reason why this doesn't work with multiple expressions at once is because if, let's say that I had a smile and I also had a, sn a snarl, well, I'm not gonna be detecting a snarl and a smile at the same time. So in this case, if I was detecting those two, this wouldn't work because the smile, let's say that only two values in the smile are set to red. Well, the, the other ones for the snarl are not gonna be set to red, so therefore, this is not this condition is not going to work, so that's what I need to change this method to be able to work with multiple expressions. For now, this will just work with one expression, so this will be set to true. If it is set to true, then I know that I can update the face UI manager singleton and tell the system that I detect that expression. So let's go ahead and go into this method right here, and the other piece about my implementation is I also have a face UI manager. So the face UI manager is the one responsible for the, the UI piece in here. So we have two pieces. One of them is gonna be the expression configuration and the expression manager, which is going to be all the ones that I'm tracking the face itself. The face UI manager is going to be the one that knows about the UI. So the way that we communicate with them is we say, okay, expression manager, send that information to the face UI manager. Face UI manager says, okay, I have, you know, I have a UI that I need to keep track of. I know that I have a face, I need to rotate that face. When the face gets rotated, I need to also update myself that I know so that I know what my values are, and I also know when a face expression was detected. Like you can see in this case, the set expression got detected. So let me let me just walk you through some of this implementation. So I have a singleton here, and I'm I also, you know, it's in the project. You can look at the implementation that I have, and I'm gonna be checking this code into source control. So you can download it from Patreon or you can wait for about a week or two when it's going to be available to everyone in GitHub. So the first thing that I do is I get a you know a reference to the face UI. I also have a face UI offset because I don't want the UI to be right on my face, so I want to offset it on Z. So that's why I have that offset. I also have what's called a face game object. And this one, the reason why I have this one here as a private 
is because if I'm doing this in the editor, I want to be able to pass in whatever I want to, to basically test the face. If I'm not using the editor, this is going to be the game object that gets associated with the mesh by the by the AR kit system. So I'll show you that below. Then the next thing that I have is expression status. So this is going to be this text right here. And I also have a, a reference to the AR face manager. So the first thing that I do is I get the AR face manager here. And I also attach myself to the face exchange event. The other thing that I also have is a public ver a public method that I use to change the color of the expression and also the text. So the in the case that I told you about the expression manager, expression manager says, okay, yep, I detect that expression. I'm going to be passing in a true value. Then the face UI manager gets it. This is going to be set to true. If this is true, we're using a ternary operator here. I set the color red and I pass in the expression name that I got detected. And I just say expression got detected. In the case that this is false, where we're not detecting that expression, I set the color to white, and then I say, you know, face expression scanning. And I have different ideas about how to implement this. I want to be able to add a, you know, more of an animated, you know, sequence where we're saying, okay, scanning, scanning face. Right now it's just static. I think I think it works for this demo. And then the next thing that I set at the very beginning is I set my UI offset so that we don't have the face right in front of right on our face it's offset on the you know on an x y and c value then the next thing that i do here because i'm attaching myself to this event then and then i pass in you know ar face exchange event arcs that i get from the event and then i say as long as the event is not you know the face is updated is not null and i detect the faces which i'm using by just checking in the count then I get the game object that is assigned to the face, and I just change the value of face. I also get the an offset value for the rotation. I don't really think I'm using I'm using this to be honest because, yeah, I think I think I was using it at some point, and then I change it. I changed my mind, so I'm gonna just go ahead and remove it. I think for the rotation, it's very simple. I'm saying, okay, face, give me your transform rotation and assign that to the face UI transform rotation. The other thing that I also do is I keep track of the position of the UI, of the actual, of yeah, the position of the UI. And then I set that position of the UI based on the face transform position, and then plus the UI offset that I set right on the, on the inspector. So there's a lot of things going on in here, and that's why I was thinking about how I implemented this, because I think for developers, it's really easy to get carried out and then forget about initial details. The, the other thing that I wanted to do in this case, I wanted to also be able to, you know, add a face on the editor and be able to test the rotation just to make sure that that was going to work. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just saying, okay, if the if the UI, if this is running on the UI editor, I'm just going to update the rotation on every frame. The reason for that is because I'm using a mock-up face to be able to test it. So that's mostly all the implementation. I show you the singleton. I show you the expression manager. I show you the face UI manager. Also, some of the models that I have, and I have a lot of things that I'm that I'm going to be adding. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity, and I'm going to show you some of the components. So let's wait until this compiles because I think I make one change by removing the offset rotation. So if we look at this implementation right now, I have you know my main camera, directional light, AR session. This is very common for AR, and then my AR session origin. I have my AR camera. So most of these are just core components. And then my implementation is this face UI that you can see right here. It's going to be this UI right here. I also have a, a face, what's called a face tracking panel, which is going to be a component inside. And in fact, if I just change this to, you know, to this mode, you can see that I can, you know, I can resize that if I wanted to. So that's that component. I also have a vertical layout group, as you can see here. The reason for that is because, because I'm creating the components dynamically. I'm adding those components, like the text boxes that you see on the on the videos right here. I'm adding those dynamically, so I'm stacking them vertically. So that's what I have this vertical layout group. And I also have my expression status, which I show you that it changes to red when the expression gets detected. Then the other thing that I also have, if we go and look at the components, on the AR session origin, I have my AR face manager that is atta attached to one of these prefabs. I'm going to show you that, those ones in just a second. And for now, this is only, you know, this is only going to work with one face. So I only have the maximum face count set to one. 
I also have a face UI manager. I show you the implementation, but you can see it here how it's connected. You can also see that I have an offset because I don't want to see that face UI right on my face. So the next thing that I have is the AR session origin component. That one has a AR session origin with a camera associated with it. I also have an AR face manager that has a face prefab. I'm going to show you those face prefabs in just a second. And also the maximum face count that I'm allowing. I, I described that I only allow one face count at a time. So make sure you set that to a one. And then I also have my face UI manager with the face UI component attached to it. Also the offset that I talked to you about and also a mock-up face that I'm using to be able to test that in the editor and also the expression status. This one gets over ring as soon as it detects the face by ARKit. So in the editor, it's fine, but as soon as ARKit detects it, it's going to get over ring. So this is how I test the, just to make sure the rotation works. So if I go ahead and hit play, you're gonna see that as soon as I change the rotation on that object, it's going to also change the rotation on the UI. So if we go ahead and look at the UI and I just change the rotation here, you can see that everything. So this was just for me to be able to test that I can, you know, I could I could change the rotation and that was gonna work with the UI. So that's what that piece is. And, and to be honest, that's mainly everything. I think the last thing that I wanted to show you also was going to be the, the prefabs themselves. So this one, I have an AR face component. The, the strong removal is set to true. I have an AR face mesh visualizer because I wanna see a mesh of the face. And I have an expression manager, which is the implementation that I just walked you through. This one is really important though, because this one is the one that is doing most of the work. So if you look at the expressions, they are a scriptable objects. So this one has the sad expression is associated with it. But if we go ahead and look at the other ones, you can see that this one has mild and this one has a snarl. So if we look at the other components that it also has, in this case, I have a futuristic fake face, but if you wanted to change the material, you can change the material as well. So the last thing is going to be the shader. And I think this video is not really about shader graph, but I'm just gonna quickly show you that this is going to be the graph that I'm using. And I'm not gonna go and take time to explain this because I think this, this is outside of the scope of this video. I just wanted to show you in this video that you know we could do face detection and we in the things that I'm gonna be working on and adding on the next video. So if you guys have any other additional questions about this implementation, please let me know and make sure that you subscribe and check out my Patreon page where I'm going to be you know, making the source code available and you guys can download it and then use it for your own projects. Thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video today on face tracking technology with an expression configuration. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. And also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for the developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting code like the one that you saw in this video and also early access to additional code and videos. Thank you very much, guys.